Welcome back, champions. Today, we are going through Venn diagrams of decision-making. So, jumping right into it, hopefully we are all familiar with what a Venn diagram is at this point. If we're not, I'm sure we've seen this somewhere around where some people might do exclusively A, some people might do exclusively B, some people might do a bit of both, some people might do none of them, okay? Now, the key to working with numbers in Venn diagrams especially is to really pay attention to the overlaps. If we can really nail down these overlaps and make, and make sure we know what number is going to be in here, then solving the rest of the Venn diagrams becomes quite a simple task, okay? And the one thing I want you to look out for is in the wording of questions. Be careful of the word only. Both the presence and the absence of the word only mean completely different things, and we really need to know what this means, okay? So for that, I'm going to show you a little fundamental example, all right? So here we have a situation. Marsha went to a dog show where she observed dogs competing for three types of ribbons, red, green, and blue. There were four dogs who won all three ribbons. There were 31 dogs who won red ribbons, 42 that won blue, 37 that won green. In addition, 13 dogs won red and blue ribbons. Nine dogs won red and green ribbons. 12 won blue and green ribbons. Every dog at the show won a ribbon. How many dogs in total? So there is a whole, whole heap of information there. Our job is to try and put that down onto a Venn diagram. So where do we begin? We need to know what our circles in our Venn diagram are going to be. So three types of ribbons, red, green, and blue. This is what a three-way diagram would look like. I know a lot of us might be familiar with the good old two-way Venn diagram, but a lot of the situations we see in the UCAT as well are three-way Venn diagrams. So all it is is the traditional two-way Venn diagram with another circle added right there, okay? So in this situation, we can label them red, green, and blue due to the ribbon colors being there. Wonderful. Now, what do we know? There were four dogs who won all three ribbons. So naturally, we look for the intersection, which contains all of red, green, and blue, which is right here. So we can conf confidently say that four will be in that spot. Let me bring your attention to this second line. It says there were 31 dogs who won red ribbons, 42 that won blue, and 37 that won green. The mistake a lot of people make is they put the number 31 here, 42 there, and 37 here. Okay? And the reason why this is wrong is we need to bring it back to the word only. Okay? If it had said 31 dogs won only red ribbons, then yes, this would be correct. Only blue ribbons, this would be correct. Only green ribbons, this would be correct as well. But the fact is, it doesn't say the word only. So what is the takeaway from this line? It's still a very, very useful line, right? What do I gain out of this line? Well, it's that now I know how many dogs won red ribbons in total. So what do I do? I just keep it in mind. I don't actually put it into the Venn diagram. I just, I put it somewhere else so I know that um, this is a number that I need to take into account. It's the total, okay? And I've put them in brackets here to illustrate that. Next, in addition, 13 dogs won red and blue ribbons, okay? Now, again, the prime mistake a lot of people make is thinking, okay, red and blue, let me look for an intersection between red and blue. Ah, red and blue is right there, except... What this question is actually talking about is the area illustrated in red. Again, you would be correct if it said 13 dogs won only red and blue ribbons. Only red and blue ribbons is in fact that red shaded area that I just shaded in right now. If it is just one red and blue ribbons, you have to account for the four in the middle there as well. So, if 13 dogs won red and blue ribbons, we know four of them won the green ones as well. And that only leaves us with nine that won red and blue only. Let's take it 
the same way for the next sentence. Nine dogs, one red and green ribbons. What section are we referring to? We are referring to that part shaded or outlined in red. Okay, that includes the four in the middle. Nine minus four gives us five. So that is our answer there. 12 on blue and green. We know the drill by now. That is the area we are referring to. So 12 minus four would give us eight. And we have filled in the overlaps. And now it becomes incredibly easy to fill in the rest of the Venn diagram. Because if we go back to this statement, 31 dogs who won red ribbons, all we have to do is get this total, subtract this, subtract this, subtract this. And then we find the ones that won red ribbons only. Okay. You add all of these up, I can guarantee you they're going to add to 31. Okay. Uh, most times, the way we get the number for only one thing or the other is by subtracting the um, whatever's overlapped and subtracting that from the total. Okay. Carrying this on to the rest of blue and green, 42, one blue. So, what do we do? We subtract. 9, 4, and 8 from 42, giving us 21. 37, 1 green. What do we do? We subtract 5, 4, and 8 from 37, giving us 20. All of a sudden, we have completed our Venn diagram here. Okay. The question asks, how many dogs are in total? Uh, sorry, there's one extra step there. It says every dog at the show won a ribbon. Okay. And the way we illustrate that in the diagram is just by putting a zero on the outside because we know that there were no dogs that won that did not win a ribbon. Okay. If it said every dog but two won a ribbon, then we just put a two here because we know those two would not have won any of these ribbons. But in this case, it is a zero. Okay. So then coming to the question, how many dogs in total? We can see if we add all of these dogs up, then we get our grand answer of 80 dogs. Okay, so that was a really fundamental example of how Venn diagrams work. This will come in really, really, really handy uh, near the end of this class. But now I want to focus on the subtypes of Venn diagrams questions that can come up. Okay, there's not just one type of Venn diagram question that can come up. I've kind of lumped them into the overarching group of Venn diagrams. So I introduce you to what I like to call the categories, questions of Venn diagrams. Now, what you just learned there about three-way Venn diagrams and the word only, again, it won't be so relevant here. It'll be relevant later on. Now, these categories questions, they can seem really overwhelming to begin with. But in my honest, humble opinion, this question is probably one of the easiest question types in the entire UCAT. The key here is to interpret really, really interpret what the question is being asked of you. You might be thinking, oh, like, of course I need to do that. What new, what new information are you telling me? Really take some time to actually understand what is being asked of you. Okay. And then follow the legend to find out exactly what you need to be looking for. Why do I say this? I just had the experience of finishing some UCAT tuition for last year's cohort. And I, come, I have people coming up to me saying, Venn diagrams, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. And the advice that I saw that helped them with their Venn diagrams was this. Just take some time and actually understand what you need to look for. Don't stress over it too much. In the heat of the moment, you're going to be like, okay, I need to do this, this, that, that. But the more time you take to actually understand what's going on, everything just seems to make that much more sense. And these categories questions become that much easier. Now, for some of these, you might need to use the calculator. Okay, this is the section where in decision making, the calculator becomes very, very useful for these quick calculations you might need to make. Okay, now I have made the QR module as well. If you haven't seen the calculator video for the QR module, then please check that out. But essentially, if I had to summarize, use your numpad, get used to it, don't use the top row, because here you get the opportunity to maximize your speed. Okay. Now, multiple statements. The tip I would have here is there's no need to go from A, B, C, and D. Okay. You don't read A and then immediately check A and then go to B and then go to C and then check that and then go to D and check that. 
Okay. Sure, you can do that, but in my opinion, that's a waste of time because oftentimes you don't need to check all four answers. What I do is I read all four of the answers and then I pick the most feasible one to go with and then check that one first, okay? C sounds like a really reasonable answer. It seems like it could happen. So I check that first. If that's not it, then I'll check the next most reasonable one, okay? Now, how do I know which one's reasonable, which one's not? This all comes down to more or less instinct but this is an instinct that can be developed just by going through some practice, okay? So moving on to the next type of Venn diagram question here. I like to call this one the which one fits Venn diagrams. And essentially, they'll give you a bunch of different Venn diagrams. Your job is to find which one of these actually represents what you see in front of you, okay? To me, I see two approaches to this one. The first is just pick and choose from the options and see which one fits. So I think that's typically easier. What I mean by that is essentially guessing and checking, okay? You're, um, obviously, there's some method to the madness of guessing, okay? You might say, okay, C looks correct. Okay, I've got my reasoning behind why I think C is correct. Let me have a look at um, if it fits with what I have in front of me, okay? That's what I mean by picking and choosing. Or... The second approach is just sketching out the information for yourself and finding the most similar looking option, okay? So if they gave you this inf information, what you would do is sketch it out for yourself, not even looking at these, and then see which one fits or which one looks most similar, okay? It's really up to you. You could use them on a case-by-case -case basis. In my opinion, just exam strategy-wise, I found this one to be a tad easier, okay? One tip I can propose to you is this. Similar options and looking for the odd ones out. You will come across some options which will outright be wrong, okay? The question is going to mention a total of 40 people in the, uh, in the football stadium or something, okay? And then you're going to have Venn diagrams that add up to only 37 people. Okay, and there's no way you can have something adding up to 37 if there's 40 people, right? Even the even if there's three people that did nothing, they're gonna include those three people on the outside or something. Okay. So you can often eliminate one or two options this way. And this is what I always used to do. I always just used to count the total number. And um you'll find it it works in you know, maybe half or three quarters of the Venn diagram questions of the which one fits that you'll come across. Now, similarly, what you'll find is that there are going to be options which look really, really similar to one another, okay? And the key is that the answer is usually one of these two similar looking answers, okay? So while we always want our Venn diagram foundations to be tip top and we want to be able to rely on them in times of stress when these things don't work, it's also really useful to have these tips on hand because they save a lot of time. They're very intuitive. And if you can save time and get it right, why would you not do it? So this is the DIY question, okay? Do it yourself. Essentially, again, there are two approaches to this and they're the same ones that we've gone through. Pick and choose from the options which you see fit and sketch out the information yourself and find which one is the most similar looking option. Except this time, in my opinion, picking and choosing and playing guess and check is not the easier option, okay? This time, sketching out information for yourself, putting down what you see, mentally, of course, onto paper and seeing which of the options look the most similar, I think that is the best way to go with this particular question type, okay? A point on relations. Some things will be related to others. Some things will be completely separate from others. I'm talking breakfast, pancakes, and uh, sand. Hopefully, we're not having sand for breakfast, but you would know that sand is inherently completely different from breakfast and pancakes. However, there's a relationship between pancakes and breakfast. Okay? I know... This seems really, really intuitive and um, logical, but just try and visualize this because if you can visualize this, then actually these questions should be not too difficult, okay?
one of the key things is to draw out various diagrams and assign names to each circle to keep track. So this is very, very syllogism, like where in syllogisms, they'd give you your names, like all tigers are um, mammals. I have no idea if they're actually mammals. All tigers are felines. That probably, I have no idea about the animal sphere. So all cats are felines. That is something I know, okay? So then you you draw something like this, okay? So okay, CA for cats, felines for felines, okay? Again, seems really intuitive, but this is the syllogism way that we want to start thinking. And that really helps with these questions. Worded questions, all right? They can come up and they're good to really test your skills for Venn diagrams. My tips, draw things out. In my opinion, this goes without saying. This time, you don't get the luxury of having Venn diagrams drawn out for you. This time, you need to take some of those DIY skills and put things down on paper. And this is where those fundamentals of Venn diagrams comes in. This is why I went through that example at the beginning, because this helps you see what is going on, okay? If you are ever struggling as to how to create a Venn diagram from words, then always go back to that fundamental example. Now, a key part of that fundamental was the wording. Again, this is where this really comes in handy. Please be careful of the word only. Both its presence and absence is important. It can completely change the meaning of a statement and how you end up creating your Venn diagram. So that really just brings us to the end of today's class. And we bring you to the action items now. Action items are to practice these Venn diagrams on Metaphor. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Focus on nailing these down for a few days. They should not take too long to get the hang of, in my opinion. Maybe the worded questions, maybe the subtraction of the intersection thing. Definitely, I admit, is a pretty nifty, it's, it's, um, it can take a bit of time to wrap your head around. But the categories questions, even, those ones should be taking no time to get used to. Okay. Practice and exposure will get you better quickly for Venn diagrams, okay? It is one of those question types where the more you practice, the more you get better at drawing things out, at visualizing these Venn diagrams. What is going on in front of you, you will get better, okay? Draw out diagrams whenever possible, okay? Whenever you can, just put down on paper how you see the information laid out in front of you. And what you'll be doing is developing a very, very useful skill for your Venn diagrams, not only Venn diagrams for the Venn diagram questions, right? But for the syllogisms as well that might come across in decision making. Okay. This is a skill that can be developed um, to become incredibly quick over time. So you don't even need to think twice about making Venn diagrams and making sure it's correct. You just do it out of instinct. Okay. You have the time. Let's try and develop that as soon as we can so it can be as strong as it can. So, with that being said, this has been Venn Diagrams of Decision Making. Thank you, and I will see you next time.